Welcome to the Daily Dispatch. First, we'll tell you about Africa being a pivot for a rising geopolitical rivalry between US, China, and Russia. Next, we'll take you to the already war-ravaged Democratic Republic of Congo, where climate is also now waging a war against its people. Also on the Dispatch, we'll tell you about the major tech wars that are emerging between the United States and China in the context of a larger geopolitical rivalry. And lastly, we'll tell you how wars, climate change, and high energy prices will combine to affect the global food production next year, further soaring the inflation and increasing the global poverty. We're here to give you the news and to help you infer the world around you. I'm Tayyaba Nassar Khan, and this is your Daily Dispatch. Defense Secretary of the United States, Lloyd Austin, stated that China and Russia are destabilizing Africa. During the first Africa-U.S. summit in eight years, the 49 African leaders flew all the way to Washington, D.C., as President Biden seeks to use diplomacy to win back influence in this continent. During the summit, African leaders are being warned that a non-transparent approach of the Chinese investment and Russian involvement in weapons peddling and deployment of the resurgence across Africa could destabilize the region. While China leads investments in Africa, President Biden aims to convince the continent's leaders by committing necessary resources that rivals China's influence. Especially after the last summit in 2014, when former President Obama's administration earlier committed to the continent, but afterwards overall funding and funding to combat AIDS was cut. Now, Russia, on the other hand, has been increasing the military and economic ties in Africa. The first Russia-Africa 2019 summit led to military equipment contracts with more than 30 African states. Russia has also invested in energy, technology, and security sectors. The U.S. has accused Russia of fanning the mercenaries in Mali and having involvement in the Burkina Bay coup, among the others. For now, President Biden plans to unveil $55 billion package for Africa spanning three years. And the White House has already announced $4 billion investment to train the African health workers by 2025. Now, in an attempt to pursue African leaders, President Biden further plans to outline support for the African Union to gain a seat at the G20, or the Group of 20, which is an international organization and intergovernmental forum comprising of 19 nations and the European Union, and could give Africa a strong voice in the global forum. This came only a few months after he supported the addition of the Union to gain a permanent seat at the United Nations Security Council. China has been increasing foreign aid, trade, and investments in Africa, especially in the power and transport infrastructure, which is part of the larger Belt and Road Initiative connecting China to Africa via the Middle East. Chinese financiers signed loan agreements worth $160 billion between 2000 to 2020. Moreover, Africa became one of the world's strongest economic performers post-pandemic recovery, assisted by Chinese imports of the continent's agricultural product, with the trade between China and Africa reaching an all-time high of $254 billion. The shift of U.S. approach stems from a larger geopolitical dynamic. They hope to counter Chinese influence and to gain African nation support in the international organizations. In what the U.S. officials have said, would be an inclusion of the African voices in the global sphere. U.S. also hopes to halt the alleged military involvement of Russia in Africa by increasing their own influence. Next, we'll take you to the already war-ravaged Democratic Republic of Congo, or the DRC, where climate is now also waging a war against its people. More than 120 people have been killed in the DRC, as its capital, Kinshasa, experiences devastating floods. The city of 15 million people, located on the Congo River, remained submerged for hours, and its key supply route was also cut off. The one-sixth of the 90 million population from the Central African Republic has been affected by the recent floods. And the government of Congo has announced a three-day national mourning. The president of DRC has blamed the climate change for devastating floods and called out the developed states to take more responsibility. Although Africa contributes just 2-3% to of the global greenhouse emissions, it is most vulnerable to climate change effects. According to the State of Climate in Africa 2021 report, Africa's climate has warmed more than the global average since pre-industrial times, which is from 1850 to 1900. In parallel, 
The sea level rise along the African coastlines is faster than the global mean, contributing to increases in the frequency and severity of the coastal flooding. Changes in continental water bodies have major impacts on the agricultural sector as well, the ecosystems, and also biodiversity. Due to extreme weather patterns, severe floods have affected South Sudan, Nigeria, the Republic of Congo, DRC, and Burundi. Since 2020, while drought in East Africa has raised fears of hunger and malnutrition. Let's now talk about the major tech wars that are emerging between the United States and China. China is working to roll out a financial support package of $143 billion to support the semiconductor industry and a move to achieve self-sufficiency in the chip making, containing subsidies and tax credits to boost the semiconductor production and research it is considered one of the biggest financial incentive package in recent years in China. 20% subsidies would be given to the Chinese firms working in the semiconductor industry to purchase semiconductor equipment domestically. The semiconductor industry is predominantly controlled by a few states, with Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company producing over 90% of them. As demand soars for chips and semiconductors, China takes a more proactive approach to create a robust industry in a sector considered the cornerstone of technological might in the future. It also signals that it is becoming one of the most active fronts of competition between Washington and Beijing. Analysts and experts predict technological rivalry will increase between the US and China, along with geopolitical competition. In August 2022, the Biden administration passed a landmark bill providing more than $50 billion in grants to boost and expand semiconductor research and production in the US. It also contained tax cuts to the tune of $24 billion for the semiconductor industries. Moreover, the US has also imposed severe export control measures to undermine China's access to the semiconductor chips and the chip-making equipment. Now, the rules bind the US companies to first obtain a license before supplying the Chinese chip makers with the equipment required for producing advanced chips. Now, China has criticized the move, alleging it undermines China's trade rights. It has officially taken up the matter with the World Trade Organization as well. This area of competition promises to continue to grow and will be one to watch. We will be sure to bring you updates on this. Also on the dispatch, we'll tell you how wars, climate change and high energy prices will continue to affect global food production next year, further soaring the inflation and increasing the global poverty. Now the Russia-Ukraine war has disrupted the production of staple crops affected supply chains, and also forced states to take export control measures, pursuing the import bill and pushing it higher for food importing countries. Both Russia and Ukraine are important sources for meeting the world's agricultural demands. They collectively export 12% of the world's food and are major providers of agro-commodities, including wheat, maize, and sunflower oil. Russia is also the biggest exporter of fertilizer in the world. To make matters worse, Recent floods in Australia, which is the second biggest exporter of wheat, have damaged the crops, while a drought is feared to affect wheat production by 40% in Argentina, which accounts for 7% of the world's wheat production. Now, palm oil, the world's most consumed edible oil, is taking a hit from the tropical storms across the Southeast Asia, where high costs have already resulted in lower use of the fertilizer. As food prices will climb further, millions of people will suffer across the world especially in poorer nations of Africa and Asia, who are already facing hunger and malnutrition. The bill for food imports will also rise, and the food imports costs are already on course to hit a nearly $2 trillion record in 2022, forcing poorer countries to cut the consumption. Now, a UNDP report claims more than 70 million people have fallen into the poverty in the last three months, and partly attributes this drastic rise in poverty levels to a combination of factors which includes wars, climate change, droughts, and heavy rainfalls, which are damaging the harvest. Such levels of poverty were not even witnessed during the COVID-19 pandemic. Lack of sufficient production of staple crops and edible oil will increase the global economic challenges. Also on the dispatch, we give you a brief summary of some of the top headlines from the world. First, the Twitter and Tesla chief Elon Musk is no longer the world's richest man after holding the position since 2021 September, when he overtook Jeff Bezos, who is the Amazon chief for the top spot. 
Now, Bernard Arnault, the chief of the luxury goods group, the LVMH, is the world's richest man alive. Musk is now worth $178 billion, while Arnault is worth $188 billion. Arnault is a French business investor and art collector who owns the LVMH, or Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, which consists of some 70 luxury brands including Louis Vuitton, Sephora, and recently Tiffany & Co as well. Elon Musk completed the $44 billion Twitter deal in October, and some analysts have cited distraction caused by legal wrestling over the Twitter deal as one of the reasons. Second, following China's sudden shift in COVID policy, we're witnessing a significant rise in infections. And the country's hospitals are now facing extreme strain due to a shortage of staff and medicines. While it was initially expected that China's easing of COVID restrictions would be brought in gradually, the nationwide protests and clashes with the police calling for the anti-zero COVID restrictions have led to a sudden policy shift. These protests were triggered by a deadly fire in Xinjiang province, which killed many people. And some said that the firefighters failed to arrive at the scene in time due to the COVID restrictions. And since then, these protests spread like wildfire across the country. After China lifted stringent restrictions, threat of COVID infections has soared. And the Chinese authorities have laid out plans such as temporary and mobile clinics to avoid the spike in infections and to encourage the elderly to get vaccinated. However, a risk of massive death toll is expected if the hospitals get overwhelmed. Third, Masood or Abu Aguila Muhammad Masood Khair al Marimi of the Libyan descent, accused of making the bomb that destroyed Pan Am Flight 103 in 1988, is now in US custody. He was charged by the US two years ago. The attack killed 270 people in the flight that was en route London to Scotland and detonated over the Scottish town of Lockerbie. Masood had already been in custody in Libya on other crimes when he was charged by the US. The Lockerbie bombing remains not only one of the deadliest attacks in the UK, but all of Europe. That's all folks. We'll be happy to hear more from you and your suggestions as well. And I'll be back tomorrow with more bite-sized news that keeps you up to date with what's going on in the country, the region, and the globe. I'm Tayyaba Nasar Khan, and this was your Daily Dispatch.